E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos de novo aqui no DCS World, AH64D, AH64D. É, o produtor de vídeo sendo lá do DCS, o Matt Egner, está postando mais um vídeo do, do H64, pessoal. Se formos aqui lá no fórum do DCS, vamos lá no fórum, você vai lá em H64, vai em mini atualizações, hoje é 2 do 3 de 2022. Ele já postou um outro vídeo de... Na verdade, ele está discutindo como taxiar... Vamos voar, né? Alguns princípios básicos para você começar a aprender a voar no H64. Eu dei uma olhada prévia no vídeo lá, pessoal. O vídeo é longo, tem uns 20 minutos. Então eu vou fazer naquele esqueminha que eu estou fazendo. Vou colocar o vídeo dele lá, colocar a legenda em português e... para vocês dar uma olhada lá. E como eu sempre digo... Se você for aqui no fórum, né, a descrição do vídeo, ele coloca tudo aqui. Então, dá para você também dar uma lida e se interar. Isso ele faz com todos os vídeos que ele tem postado do H64. Bora lá? Como o vídeo é longo, para não ficar conversando demais aqui. H64. Vamos voar com H64. O título é esse. Eu até dei uma olhada aqui, já deixei ele na pré-carregar aqui. Só ver se as configurações estão certas, se o gravador está certo. Beleza, deixa eu carregar ele aqui na tela cheia. Bora lá. É, AH64, é, Matt Egner. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. And in this DCS AH64D video, we're going to learn how to get this bird up in the air. Uh, first we'll talk about hovering. Then two different ways you can taxi the aircraft, and then two different ways you can take off. But before we get too much further, let's uh, press right control and enter at the same time to bring up our controls indicator. And you can see that up here in the top left corner. So first we have this big uh, cross that dominates most of the... What's that Mirage doing here? Another one. Right. So the cross here represents what our control stick is doing, or what we call in a helicopter, a cyclic. If we push forward, it's going to dip the nose and increase airspeed. If we pull back, it will raise the nose and decrease airspeed. If we go uh, left and right at low airspeeds, it will slide the aircraft uh, laterally, left and right. Or at higher airspeeds, it will roll the aircraft. At the very bottom, we have our indicator for the anti-torque pedals or the rudder pedals. And much more so than say a fixed wing aircraft, you want to have a quality controller if possible. Whether it's actual rudder pedals or like I do, uh, a quality uh, hat switch to control the X and Y axes uh, for the anti-torque pedals. Along the left side, we have a unified controller for both the collective position as well as the two uh, power levers. So as we uh, pull collective or pull pitch, see it rise fall and for the power le levers want to keep it just here in the fly position and this way it'll keep a constant rpm of uh, 101 percent and really the only time we would ever want to bring this out of the fly position was either a training situation or if you had an engine out so we'll just keep it in the fly position for today uh, next let's talk a little bit about the uh, the power settings and of course here on the engine page we have our torque right now we're at 17 percent But, you know, based on your weight, uh, your elevation and temperature, the amount of torque uh, for hovering and operations naturally will vary. Now, it needs to be uh, uh, fleshed out quite a bit more, but if you go to the main page and the good performance page, you'll actually see a lot of the estimated data here. But again, at least in early access, this could be very rough, but we'll tighten this up in time. Okay, so that's my little preamble here. At this point, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the two different techniques of hovering the aircraft. So we talk about hovering, there's uh, two principal things we're going to keep in mind here. Uh, first is the uh, symbology up on the HDU or the helmet display unit. And this can be really handy uh, for a nice precise uh, pickup or uh, pulling collective. Uh, the second are those outside visual references we call far rocks and near rocks. And even though you could actually uh, do a hover based on just one of those, the, the best hovers are going to be a combination of those two. 
But regardless of how you do it and what works best for you, there's some principles you're going to need to keep in mind here. Uh, the first is as we start to pick up collective or picking up, it's going to start generating a slight uh, sliding of the nose to the right. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a little bit of left boot or left uh, anti-torque pedal to counteract that. Uh, the second is on the right side, it's going to generate some translating tendency and we're going to have to put a little right cyclic to counteract that. So let's talk first about some of the symbology we're seeing here. Uh, right now we're in the HDU symbology uh, hover mode. And in the center we have our line of sight uh, cue, which we talked about before. But in this case, you can think of it as a top-down view of the helicopter, with the four spokes being our four rotors, and the very center being the rotor mast. Now in the very center right now we have a small circle, and that's our acceleration cue. And the acceleration cue, uh, when it's in the middle, it means that we're stationary, not moving in one direction or another, which as we're uh, stationary right now, it's not moving. But as we uh, pick up and we start going in one direction or another, we'll start to see it offset from that center point. And in most cases, it's going to be due to what we're doing with our cyclic. So in many ways, you can think of the acceleration cue as a representation of what we're doing with the cyclic. Now, as we start to move that acceleration cue outside of center, we're going to have the velocity vector line also grow from the center towards the acceleration cue. Uh, but the big thing about the uh, velocity vector line that its length indicates the speed at which we are moving. Now here in the hover mode, the max length is going to be six knots. Okay, let's take a look at this operation. So I'm going to pull back just a tiny bit of collective feed in just a tiny bit of left boot, a little bit of a cyclic, start raising, a little light on the wheels, I'm using my anti-torque pedals to center up, I can, using the cyclic if I pull back, I can move that acceleration cue back, if I go forward, it's going to go forward, center up, cyclic or pulling back further and the key is not to chase that acceleration cue now right now we're in a uh, in ground effect or IGE and that's uh, 48 feet which is also the uh, rotor disc diameter when we go Outside of that, we're going to be an OGE, or outside of ground effect, and it's going to take a lot more energy and power to maintain a hover. Let's do a slide to the left. We can see the uh, velocity vector now. About six knots. About, there we go. Let's arrest it. Let's kill our forward speed by lifting the nose up a bit. And let's go back to the right. And arrest that by counteracting. Raise the nose a bit center up. Okay. We'll reduce collective and then set her down. You can see it's, using the symbology is pretty easy, but the key is not to over control and use ham fist. A small deliberate uh, movements is going to be the key to a good hover. Now I also talked about visual references. Uh, to get this across uh, best, I want to go ahead and turn off HD entirely. When we talk about again uh, far rocks near rocks. I'm going to use um, these bushes here as my reference for my heading alignment to keep my nose up, you know where I want it to be. Uh, for near rocks, when you're looking at you know marks of the pavement, uh, maybe this line here uh, to gauge any kind of drift forward, back, left, and right. So it's a bit more tricky. And I'm still learning to do this just visually. But I think once you get the hang of it, it'll probably be just as easy. So, uh, as before, I'm still going to put in a little bit of left foot, a little bit of left cyclic, start to pick up. Backwards too much. Forward. Right now, coming back. Stable. 
and we'll put it back down. Okay, so that's a look at hovering. Uh, next, let's take a look at taxiing the aircraft. So we have two options to uh, taxi the 64. We can either a ground taxi with the wheels or we can hover taxi. We're going to do a ground taxi first. Uh, first, uh, coming down here, we have our tail wheel light. When it's unlit like this, it means that the tail wheel is locked. And this is really handy if you just want to go in a straight line. Uh, but if you want to make a turn, we're going to have to unlock that tail wheel, which we'll do here in a second. So to get going, we'll bring about 23% of torque. And then push forward on the cyclic, and we're moving forward. Again, it's very stable because we had that uh, tail wheel locked. Want to slow down, just pull back on the cyclic, and wait for the acceleration cue to be at the center. There we go. So like I said, we could also steer. To do that, we're going to turn off the tail wheel. So now it's unlocked. Now we can use the anti-torque pedals to steer it on the ground. So again, we're going to bring up collective, go forward. Now using the pedals, left, right. Relock. We're going to have to make sure we're going a straight line first. You're not going to be able to relock that wheel if it's not a line forward. There it is. Okay, I'll stop here. Okay, I'm going to recenter my controls and we'll do a hover taxi now. hover taxi it's going to be a lot like we did with the initial hover so we'll get ourselves up into a hover and then essentially just going to dip the nose a bit and establish ourselves in in ground effect around five feet or so to taxi to where we want to go and then we'll steer the aircraft using the anti-torque pedals but if we gain a bit a little bit too much speed we'll probably have to put a little bit of cyclic uh, left or right as well so again we're going to pull a little collective a little bit of right foot a little bit of left select uh, cyclic forward, four feet, so we've got 13 knots, five feet, let's go ahead and slow down by bringing up the nose, reducing collective, and we're back down. You can see uh, uh, taxiing the aircraft is uh, really easy, both in the ground and using hover taxi. Okay, uh, last big thing we'll talk about is uh, taking off the aircraft, and then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, force trim. Now, taking off the 64 is going to be a lot like we just learned in regards to uh, taxiing the aircraft. Uh, we can either go into a hover, either in ground or out of ground effect, and then transition a forward flight, or we could do a rolling takeoff. Uh, first, let's take a look at a hover takeoff. So let's go into a hover first. Again, a little left boot, a little left cyclic, and pick up. Myself pointed down the runway as best I can. And when we're ready, we'll just uh, dip the nose forward a bit. That's where we're six knots. I want to go to either transition or cruise symbology mode. And now we have our flight path vector, FPV. And we're just going to keep it there at the end of the runway. Passing through 25 knots. Okay, easy as that.
Okay, um, go ahead and reset, and now we're going to do a rolling takeoff. So, if you're lucky enough to have a runway, though, this may be the easiest way to take off. And all we're going to do is we're going to uh, push the cyclic forward and start adding collective. And around 25, uh, 30 knots, we'll center the cyclic, uh, pull some additional collective, and we'll get airborne. And even though the uh, uh, tailwheel is locked, we'll still have a little bit of uh, pedal control down the runway. So, cyclic forward, pulling collective. Six knots, I'll go to transition. Now we've got our flight path vector and their steering cue down the runway. Okay, 30 knots, center of the cyclic, bring up collective, and we're airborne. And continue adding some more collective. down the collective a little bit okay while we're airborne let's talk about uh, force trim so on the cyclic we have the force trim release switch or FTR and what that means is uh, on the cyclic and on the rudder pedals we have these magnetic brakes and those brakes keep those controls at a centered position from which the aircraft then maneuvers based on your control inputs and all the switch does is when we press it uh, forward it releases that magnetic brake and then we can move the controls to a new location then release the switch and then essentially reclamp those magnetic brakes on those controls at that new centered position so that sounds like a lot so let me use an example here so if you look at our slip ball it's about a half ball uh, to the left so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, press and hold the FTR And release. So what I did there is I moved my rudders a little bit to center it up and now we're actually in aerodynamic trim. Now let's say if I want to go nose to tail trim. So I'll do the same thing. I'm going to hold and uh, keep holding down the FTR button and use my rudder pedals to bring my FPV with me and release. And now this is my new trim position. So this is a really handy way to set your trim and uh, pretty much keep it there. Anyhow, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video on getting the 64 Airborne, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. É, parceiro, a coisa tá ficando boa, tá ficando boa. O senhor Matt Egner tá fazendo um serviço muito bom, senhores. Pra quem não sabe, a previsão da máquina chegar é nesse mês agora de março. Hoje é 2 de março. <risos> a previsão é para chegar até o dia 31. Desde que algumas pessoas que dizem que administram esse planeta não façam nenhuma cagada lá e estragam nossa, nossa alegria. E todo mundo sabe do que, que eu estou falando, né? O mundo hoje está uma bagunça. Estava uma bagunça antes, virou pior agora. Tem uns caras que conseguem estragar a coisa mais ainda. Espero que eles resolvam isso e não estragam a nossa festa. Ah, H64D, DCS World, o seu Matt Egner acaba de postar mais um vídeo de, do H64. Dando algumas dicas que como nós vamos voar na aeronave, né? Fala que em vez dele começar da partida fria, ele resolveu começar pelos decolar, que é a parte mais fácil, né? Podemos dizer assim. Mas também ligar a aeronave, a maioria do pessoal nem liga, né? Só coloca no automático lá e já começa dando tiro. Os caras é forte. Mas isso aí, pessoal. Não esqueça de compartilhar o vídeo. Não esqueça de assinar o canal. Senão o YouTube não distribui os vídeos para vocês. Principalmente se vocês notificar as outras pessoas. Ó, oh, eu conheci um vídeo do canal tal que posta vídeo do H64. Diz que logo, logo vai estar tá pronto. Esquece não, pessoal. Valeu. Fui.